welcome to we're calling it exploring open usd today well <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't sure who was going to bring me in i was about to tell it myself is that the welcome. new name what's that is that the new name you know we're, we're trying what i'm what what i am sharing is that there are some exciting announcements coming up at gtc oh yeah that and i'm not sure yet to be honest there's so it but i think it's going to affect the name and the nature of this live stream and i can't wait i can't wait to share but i have to wait to share i guess i can wait to share because i am waiting to share um what what's 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 going on so you guys excited literally like yeah it's in two weeks away now i'm excited for coffee I actually, yeah. I'm excited to wear a sweater, I suppose. I saw that the weather over there is like 46 in the evening. So, is it really? Yeah. Yeah. You're the only one who's like, oh, that's, or to me, I'm like, wow, that sounds so warm and nice. (laughs) It has been like 90 degrees here for, we only had like one day where the weather was like cold enough to wear a sweater. And by the afternoon, you have to take it off. Like, like Jen well, like messaged 75. me the other day. Yeah, Jen messaged me the other day. She's like, "Are iguanas falling out of the tree over you?" And I'm like, "No, it's like 90 degrees every day." So no. Yeah, LA Actually, is more warm than it is in um, the Bay Area and in Northern mm-hmm. California. Uh, so we get really cool nights out here. Like right now, it's actually 46 where I am currently, um, and it's foggy. So it's like, no, nah, okay. yeah, no, it's like. So it's funny it's because it's like it's 37 here in Utah, and I just took out the trash and I'm like out in my t shirt, like, yeah, oh, it's yeah. really nice out. It's oh gosh, not yeah, me. I'll be freezing. <laughs> well, at least we're not in uh June gloom time, so oh, is... don't, don't get me started. <laughs> I moved from Utah to San Diego when I when I first graduated and in June, and they're all like, oh, June gloom, the weather's so awful in June. I'm like, are you guys kidding me? It's like partly cloudy. From like 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. and then it clears up and it's just gorgeous. And that this is the June gloom, you guys. <laughs> I guess if you're used to the sun all day long, yeah. Any clouds? You know, no matter how the weather is outside uh, in San Jose uh, at GDC, it is going to be bright and sunny inside. Um, you guys are all part of that, and the reason for that because you guys are doing some amazing labs. Um, but there's a whole bunch of fantastic sessions slated. Um, I hope everyone watching is registered. If you're not able to come on site, I hope you're registered for the virtual. Um, if you can make it on site, please do come because there's nothing better than meeting other NVIDIA developers, the experts in the different areas around AI and other areas you may, you may be working with. Isaac Sin, the Inception team will be there. Um, we will have uh, many opportunities for networking, which I'll show you on this next slide, I think. There you go. We have an open USD day happening on Tuesday, March 19th, kicks off with a nice breakfast. Uh, I believe Ashley and Jen will be there having coffee because there's coffee there. And, and Eric, I hope you're all there too. Wait, um, Jen, are you drinking coffee again? I will drink coffee at GTC. Right. Okay, okay. And then when so, I go home, I will not be drinking coffee. <laughs> great yep. question. Did you see? I just got a question from the in the chat. The Inception team will absolutely be be there. Not only will they be there, but there's like an awesome area where the Inception team will be. I wonder if he doesn't know what they don't know what the Inception team is. Oh, Inception team is Nvidia's uh, team that focuses on enabling and helping startups with free resources. Everything from things like cloud credits uh, to introductions to uh, investors, uh, things that really helped uh, get startups off the ground. I have referred so many people in the community over to Inception who are working on a startup, and every single time the feedback I get is Inception has just been amazing help, amazing resource. So you can uh, you can obviously connect with, uh, check out, and uh, I'll post a link in the chat in a second, but it's a great website that covers it. Uh, we actually had a live stream with Les a few weeks ago where he covered uh, some of the uh, uh, work of Inception, so I'll paste a link for also that in the chat. Um, but yeah, if you are able to come to GTC, there's going to be great opportunities to, to chat and hang out with the Inception team and also meet other startups who are part of Inception uh, that'll be there. Um, but we're really excited about Open USD Day, which takes place on Tuesday. Um, not only are these sessions on the left happening, uh, but we also have um, a breakfast I mentioned and a lunch with the experts, which is going to be a nice two hour chunk of time 
where you can hang out with different experts. We're setting up different tables. Uh, we have some uh, also a, a cool uh, cool giveaway planned. Um, lots of uh, lots of really awesome stuff. Eric, you should post your uh, your super secret discount yes. code. Boom. Um, if, you are, if you are coming on site, Eric, don't got usually I don't usually share this. He's I very, mean, if you've been on my LinkedIn, you know that I don't usually share this. Yeah, uh, not every share. single day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then speaking of uh, trains, so these are some of your sessions, right? Uh, let's see. Yep. Yeah, I see yours. Training on tournament yeah. mobile, mobile race race car. There we go. Yeah. Is Eric and uh, Ashley? Which one's yours? Uh, building a three D product configurator with OpenUSD and Omniverse. And okay. you guys are in for a treat because Ashley has been working very hard on this. Uh, for and I'm hearing months. amazing oh things about it, Ashley. Um, mm -hmm. So people are really, really uh, in for a very special treat. If you're coming on site, they're going to make it to these training sessions. Um, uh, well, let us know if you're coming. There's also open USD dinners. I don't know how you sign up for those, but you can At have the, dinner. The dinner with strangers is going to be a big table that you can sign up for when you're in person. I think it's like, really close to the registration area. So when you walk in, you should see it and you'll be able to sign up for dinners with, uh, with different NVIDians. Yeah. There's also the brain date. So you can yeah. sign up through the brain date app to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with us. Did yeah. you guys set up your profiles? No, that's a today. That's a today thing. Do it I, today. I, I yeah. set up my profile. I haven't started my thing yet. You know, I don't know why, but I'm so nervous about it. The idea of someone <laughs> like sitting down to have a date with my brain freaks me out. <laughs> Maybe they should be freaked out. <laughs> it's awesome though. Brain date. So there's, there are two things people should check out. There's a GTC app, which is now live that helps making navigating everything that GTC offers much easier. Uh, you can get that from your app store. Uh, and there's also uh, the brain date, uh, which we're talking yeah. about right now, which is, I'll post a link uh, on the chat, but we have a networking page that tells you all the resources for networking with folks, including the brain date uh, webpage, which lets you kind of search for a topic, or you can look to see the current attendees that are registered. Uh, and then you can set up a, uh, oh my God, who put, who put that on the screen? I did not do that. I, mean, I did it. I did it. I thought it was funny. So. I have I, I have a Papa Chuck filter on our lot of their live streams where I'm like, ah, is this okay for the screen? You squeak by there, Papa Chuck. You're lucky. Um, um, but anyway, so uh, yeah, so that the brain date is a great way to not only uh, meet uh, other Nvidians but other attendees who are going. They have profiles set up there uh, with their interests, and you maybe meet your next business partner. Um, or, or consultant needed for your project. So Braindate is a fantastic, to me, I feel like that's one of the most valuable resources mm. at a conference like this. The sessions and training labs are awesome, but also being able to connect with other people that are developing, mm. um, it can be an amazing resource for your company. So I hope uh, I hope to see you all there. Um, really looking forward to it. Great question from Mike Turner. Is the raffle for virtual attendees as well as in person I think so. There are some raffles on the last day on the floor, and those are only for uh, in-person attendees. And you've got to do a task. There's we we give you kind of like a scavenger hunt kind of a thing at on the floor uh, of the main conference area. And if you do that scavenger hunt, then you can then you're in the raffle, and you do have to be there. Um, you don't have to be present when they announce your name, but you have to pick up the prizes. Um, before the end of the before the end of the uh, conference, mm -hmm. so, and then uh, if you're talking about winning a Jetson Orin Nano in my hands-on lab, you'd have to be not only in person, but you have to get into that lab and be one of the teams who who tries to race the car to win one of those. So, listen, I just got this. This is this is literally just came in one minute ago because uh, someone back at headquarters, Amelia was watching. Uh, we are doing a giveaway on on the community Discord uh, oh. during GTC. So, uh, if you are attending virtually, we have a great channel we set up in Discord the other day called GTC. Uh, we're going to be also putting announcements in the announcement channel all throughout the week. Uh, a lot of amazing announcements that Eric was talking about or alluding to before. Um, but uh, if you join the Discord, uh, you'll be part of all the action, uh, and you can engage with other people who are watching the sessions online or the people who are there who are giving you scoop. I, I think. Um, I think. One or more of us, maybe in this in this group here, uh, will actually be doing some live and recorded stuff during each day in GTC. We'll kind of walk around the booth, we'll catch some footage, um, and uh, and we'll maybe do a couple stage sessions on Discord 
uh, we're, we're kind of planning that out now. And we'll, um, but you, you have to be on Discord to be able to know that stuff. Uh, so go to uh, discord.gg slash NVIDIA Omniverse, um, and you'll be a, be a brand spanking new member of our Discord server if you're not there already. Cool. All right. So what do we have here? So reinforcement learning. Yeah. So it turns out, so we want to have a fair competition during this hands-on lab. So that um, because, you know, when you when you run a simulation on these computers, they don't always run at the same frame rate or at the same exactly the same pace. So if we just took a real world stopwatch and time the, the time around the track, it wouldn't be a fair competition. And so Ashley has jumped in and she's written this really cool functionality for us uh, to time the races fairly. And, and it turns out that being able to time a car going around a track is kind of your foundational reward for a reinforcement learning system. And so as we move forward towards reinforcement learning, we'll, we'll use the same action graph as a part of our reward system. So it's really, it's, I think it's elegantly kind of, it's, it's kind of elegantly simple. Thanks to action graph. It's, um, it's going to make for a fair competition and it's going to help us teach cars to drive even faster later. So do you want to show us what you've got there, Ashley? Oh, yep. Um, I got to share my screen, don't I? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's do that. I am out of my... I was going to say, you're a little rusty. I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> you've been great, busy. great comment from Zia. Or I, I didn't know this, but racing race timing is an actual real-world drone racing problem. I believe it. I bet it's hard to, uh, especially it, is drone racing head to head or is it more, uh, is it more, um, oh, I forget. Is it more like a time trial? Oh, so it's laps. Okay. You know what else? I just remembered for those of you on Twitter, we can't post messages to Twitter yet. And so here is. My right. discount link. That's going to be hard to copy, though. Uh, take a screenshot you, and then just write yeah, it down. Yeah, take a screenshot. Yeah. Or if you want to be able to see the chat, we do have them available on Twitch and YouTube if you want to head over there uh, yeah. to grab that copy of it. Yeah, I keep hoping they'll add. It's a new, you know, we use StreamYard for these live streams, and they just added uh, X recently, and I'm hoping that they add that will be able to post messages to X soon. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to say, so we, have to, we should actually mention this really quick. So we should welcome the people watching from X because yeah. we just started a few weeks ago and we just noticed this in this, in yesterday's live stream, we saw a bunch of viewers come over from there. Uh, so I'm wondering if that's, uh, that's uh, some of the great new viewers we see here today. So if you are joining for the first time, thank you. Awesome to see you. Uh, mm -hmm. And if, yeah, if you want to engage in the chat, jump over to the NVIDIA Omniverse YouTube or, or Twitch channel. We, we can see your chats. So when you send a chat to X, we'll see it. We can respond to it, but we can't, we can't chat back. We can only, we can only exactly. talk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Ashley, uh, talk to what, what do you, what have we got here? Okay. So, uh, with a little help from Michael, what's his last name? Jessert. I can't. Oh, Gusser. Gusser. Yeah, Gusser. So he wrote up like that a, an example action graph of how to do like a lapping system um, where you have like two prims and then another prim is going between them. And then that uses real time to log how much time it takes between it. So I just kind of elaborated on that a little bit. And first, let me show you what it does when I press play and move the car through the starting line and then back through the lap line. I'm not going to go around the whole lap because. I can't drive this thing yet, so we'll do it all <laughs> manually. <laughs> uh, and then I'll explain how this is working. So I'm going to press play. And just to make it easy, I'll use uh, the translation. I could just press drag uh, it. I could drag it, but it's too slow for me. So I'm going to just drag this forward. And what it's going to do is it's going to start the starting oh, time. So you saw the start so cool. line kind of disappear, and then the lap line start. So say, you know, you go around the track and then you go back through the lap. Uh, I, I don't know if you can see this in the corner. It says like 3.8. And then if I go through it again, 6.8. Where is it saying that? It's 
so hard to see. Is it on the console or is it on the screen? It's, so over, it, it's over here. Oh, okay. So it shows up on the left side of the, the screen. So right now it says mm, like 3.0333. 3. 3. Right. So that's how long it took me to go from each lap. So Got it. can wait a few seconds. Let's let's try to highlight this. Um, I can't. They can't see our our mouse. They can only see yours. But if you look at the top left um, corner of the viewport, there's a little. You when you when Action Graph when you um, print to console or when you do a print statement, you can actually select to print to the screen. Yeah. And it'll print in that top left corner. Is what you're seeing there. Let's see. And so what it'll do is when you drive when you have the car drive around that track, <clears throat> it will every time you pass through that, it'll say, Well, how long did it take since the last time you passed through? Yeah, so, so it should be printing it to the info, but I'm missing something here. Maybe when you, when you select print to screen, does it stop printing it to info? Correct. Oh, gotcha. All right, let's take that yeah. off and we can see it print to the console. It might be easier to read on screen. Nope, I don't know. Does well, you can... well, you got to do it now, right? You probably could, right? So, because uh, I think you can open up those logs. So, like, if you right click in the console, um, there you go. You can see it's there, triggering it. Yeah, there should be an option to to view it from a text file, though. Yeah. We make that bigger. Well, you can see it printing to the console now. It's still the same font size, though. Yeah. Let's see. How do you make it bigger? Uh, open so log yeah, folder? Open, uh, click the edit one, because that one will directly open up that log. And then you can uh, scroll all the way to the bottom. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Woohoo! And then if you yeah. do, like, control plus, it'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you yeah. go. Okay. Um, let's make on your smaller. What I do is I make my display resolution 1080p. I think this is okay. Yeah, right, actually, I can see the number even more. So I'll make it as big as possible. The numbers are right here. All right, so now it should print like a pretty high number because it's taken a while. Will it print? Will it update the text file? Oh, it's not, it's not updating the text file. No, you would have to reopen it. Oh, that's so lame. Yeah, that's all right. I think we can okay, get well, that. You can work. see, all right, I don't know if you're able to see this, but it says 25.6. So that was because it took me 25.6 seconds to go through the lap line again. So it's counting down from what I hit it the first time. And then if you go all the way around, and then it's going to minus the difference of how long it took you to hit it one more time. So the way that this is doing this, so... Um, I'm going to organize it a little bit so you can read what's happening. So on the trigger event, it's going to be... Uh, what does the on trigger event do? So on trigger, uh, when you have a mesh that has collisions enabled to it, you can add a trigger attribute. And then on that trigger attribute, it's just, it's just looking for whatever hits that trigger. And that could be any other body that has collisions. Okay. So as soon as another mesh with collisions hits that trigger, then it's going to log it, it here. It fires an event. Right. It fires that event. <clears throat> and okay. so what's that doing now is it's going to um, make sure that the starting line is then turned off and the lap line is turned on. And that only happens once as soon as you hit it. So that's basically starting your timer. When that starting line is then turned off, it's going to come back down here and it's going to read the time that you hit it. So that's going to be in your absolute simulation time and it's going to write that to a variable. Okay, so okay. this simulation time is logged as soon as you hit it and that's captured in this variable sim time. Then when the lap line is enabled, it's going to come back down here and you're going to go through the lap and once you hit that lap line, it's going to write to time B, which is a new variable. And time B is grabbing the absolute time that you hit it. So say you hit the starting line at, you know, one second. And then you hit the lap line at, you know, 30 seconds. So you have one second as a, your sim time. And then you have 30 seconds as your uh, lap line, your time B. 
it's going to go into the subtract node and it's going to output the difference from how long it took you to go from your starting line, start time, like that sim time, all the way around to your lap line. So once it does that, I noticed that it, does, it outputs a negative number, which would make sense, like 29 minus one. <laughs> You're gonna oh, get yeah. a negative number. So I just negated it. Could you just it. flip the inputs to the subtract node? Yeah, I guess you could. That would have okay. probably been easier. So uh, I, just, same difference, right? I just did the negate. Um, it does the same thing. I could just uh, flip those. Flip them. Yeah. And so then you output it as a print text. So when I print text, it's looking for a string. So then I just added the two string <clears throat> node so that we can see it here on the screen. Um, and that makes it just easier to be able to, to log it. And uh, so then you would get your, how long it took you to go between. So you're not getting like, okay, it took me 30 seconds. You're like, how long did it take me from the time I started to the time I hit that lap line? And then it's going to continue to do that every time you hit that lap line. So if you do two laps, you'll have your first one in your console. So say your first one was 2.4 seconds. And then your second one, was 25 seconds. So your first lap took you 2.4 seconds. Your second lap took, took you 25 seconds from the time yeah. that you started. And this is really easy to edit around. You could change it to where the lap, every time you hit a lap line, it, it logs to the sim time. So it's really customizable and really easy to do. And then the last thing I did was just make sure that every time you, you stop the stage, it resets. it resets. Got it. That's so cool. Yeah, and once we test this some more over the next couple of days, we can change it around if we need to to yeah. see how it works. It might be, it'll be easier to see, Eric, once you have like a working car for this testing. I don't think you yeah. had a chance to look at it just yet, but. Well, we'll yeah, we'll just have to try it on, um, on one of the Linux computers that can run the model. Yeah. Is, is this... Um, is this scene with the action graph? Is it on Nucleus? Yeah, it is on the one that you mm -hmm. sent me. It's in your racing that grid F110 start, folder? but you can just pull that lapper USD into whatever stage you want. Oh. Your the lapper USD is can literally you try that? yeah, it doesn't even have the car in it. So the only thing because I wanted to avoid the action graph using anything that had to do with the car, so that if you were to change the car around, the action graph doesn't break. So the action graph is only reading the your racing USD or your racing grid start USD. Well, so the only things you'll need is the starting line and the lap line. Well, this wasn't in the plan, but I'm just really curious, you know? Oh, yeah. We, we want to try now. That'd be great. Sure. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, because I've just been doing this back and forth with this little thing. Yeah, totally. Let me just... um. Let's see. Oh, that's here. right. I'm not hitting to console anymore. While you, I see, I'm, I'm gonna, it's going to take me just a minute because I've got to log into VPN and kind of get going here. Oh, well, but I've got, I've got my Linux laptop right here. So. Just, uh, It's hard to see, but it took me 0.8 seconds to go from start to the lap line. This time it took me 0.8 and 0.36. I do want to go over this graph like l later on and. Um, Probably, I don't know if anyone on the stream has this is kind of evolving into my learn with me stream. The The biggest issue that I have with this is that the trigger doesn't read specific prims. And so if your car was to go over this extremely slowly, it's going to trigger twice. It's going mm -hmm. to trigger when the front wheel hits it and then when the back wheel hits it. So if, you know, if it was to take your car a whole second to get over the lap line, then your time is going to look different, right? 
because you'll hit, say it took your car 10 seconds to go around the lap and then that's when your front tire hits it and then it takes your car another second to get actually over it and the back tires so you, it'll look like your time it took you um it would mess up the time right it wouldn't make sense it would say it was like nine seconds when it actually took you 10 seconds to get over it i, I assume if the car is going fast enough it won't matter too much because uh, it will only be a matter of milliseconds but over the next couple of days what i want to figure out is how to get this trigger to only read when the collider of the front wheel hits it not the back wheel or anything else i've got some great questions rolling in um is this environment example available online not yet but it will be published to a github repository um or before for gtc and, and after gtc it will be available and then is on stage similar to on tick in unreal engine uh on stage event is to set a custom event so you can say you know when you save it when you start the omnigraph when you start the simulation um we do have an on tick so if you go into action graph and if you go into events or just search for on tick then you pull out the on tick node this is going to be similar to what unreal engine has where it's reading every frame of the animation graph so this is what you would actually want to use on stage event i just wanted to make sure that when someone stops and hits stop play it resets and it doesn't reset every time a new frame is is triggered and then next let's see what we got next um i think you've answered this but um is it detecting the front of the car it's detecting like every time any other collider hits it in fact one problem we had early on was the starting line if it's wider and goes through the cones right then the cones constantly trigger so this has definitely got to be, I'm, I'm going to play with this over the next few days because it would suck if for some reason your car went around this lap line like right here and then you didn't trigger it. But I didn't want to extend the lap line too far and it hit these cones because then it would constantly be triggering. So I need to find a way to only read when the trigger um, is the wheel. Uh, that's easy to do programmatically, like, you know, if other collider you know is equal to wheel front right then do this in visual scripting um you'd have to have that very specific node if i was trying to do something like select if and then there's this and then like the condition if true if false so i was playing around with this kind of ran out a little bit of time yesterday doing it so i'm still going to explore this a little bit more i'm not sure if i'm going to have to create a bundle so you have like read prim not that one. Uh, where's the bundle one? If I could spell it, eh? Uh, so I was going to do where I create a bundle and then I extract like the specific prim out of it, but I have not ever played with the bundle nodes on Action Graph yet. So I'll do some experimenting over the next couple of days so that it will only read the collider of the car. Someone okay. said, could you add an invisible automatic plane to the script that collides with the start line? Invisibility doesn't, oh, with the, yeah, well, we we actually chose to do the, that, that low line so it only hits the wheels instead of the other parts of the car. So we actually started off with like a big plane and we found that a, something short worked better for us because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we would like to filter though. I mean, it'd be nice to filter the collisions, right? That's kind that's of what the, I think that's our the biggest next step is it's not so oh. much like a plane versus a line. It's just getting the trigger to only read a certain collision. Yeah. Um, and you know what I found, and this is uh, something that also was like bothering me is when you turn off and vis like the visibility of a prim in Omniverse. Um, it doesn't turn off its it in the stage. The stage still recognizes it as a prim. It's just no longer 
visible in the render. So just because I have this lap line or this starting line invisible, the, it's, the triggers are still happening. So that's why mm -hmm. in my action graph, I'm only having the trigger of uh, the start or the lap line print to text. I found that when I flip-flopped it and I had the um, sim time print to text, then every time you hit the starting line, whether it was invisible or not invisible, then it would trigger. So I've just flip-flopped it so that it only prints the text of the time different or time B difference. Interesting. I think what you could do instead of just hiding it is you could uh, translate it downward. So it's out of the, so it's out of below the ground plane or something. Yeah, I was thinking about doing that too, but I was like, that seems a little bit more complicated and I'd be afraid mm. to break other X forms in the process. Like, um, yeah. So that. that would be like another option. I'm going to talk to Devin LaFontaine. Um, he's been on the community streams before. He's, uh, he, he works in Action Graph. He's a senior dev there. So, uh, I'll talk to him and see if he has any ideas for how we can better improve this. Right now it works and that's beautiful, um, but I, mm -hmm. I want this to be like top notch for the GTC session. Well, let's try it. I've got it. Lo I've got the scene loaded <clears throat> on my on my uh, Linux laptop. And if you're new to the stream, just a quick overview. What we've got here is we've got this. This we've. We developed CAD for this remote control car sized vehicle. We've imported that into Omniverse. We've got USD layers that completely rig it and prep it for simulation. And then we've tr we've driven it around this track by hand and collected annotated data that, te that te teaches the car where to drive. We trained an AI model off of that based off of ResNet 18. And so now we have an AI model that will drive this car around the track. And let me just show you that first. I, I never get tired. I was I just did this. I just, I just never get tired of this. So we're launching our ROS node that runs the model. Now if we start the simulation, the car hands up everyone. We got it. This is the signature. We're not driving it. It's driving itself. Jen, hands up. Jen's driving it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no magician tricks. It's not a video, no, no trickery, just a car driving itself. And if you come to GTC in person, you can join this lab and learn how to do this. And we'll, we'll, we'll be right there. Siltex gave a really good point. Um, and this is, we should explore this. Should there be multiple triggers around the course? Otherwise, I'll figure out only go back and forth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That, I mean, yeah, right now, I guess we're going on the honor system that you aren't going <laughs> to do that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, maybe we should do that. So then you have to, maybe there'll be like three triggers. And so like you have the starting line, uh, mid lap and then end lap. That would actually be a great idea. So I, I wondered how long it would take for someone to figure that out, how to cheat. And, uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little disappointed in you that, that you thought of cheating so quickly. Still text. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I'm, <laughs> so I'm a, I used to be a middle school teacher for those that aren't aware. And that would have been one of the first things. If I was like, hey, there's a prize. Uh, if you get the best time, a middle school student within like 0.3 seconds would have figured that out. To <laughs> so maybe this person is either a middle schooler or is a parent to middle schoolers. There we go. <laughs> Uh, so, all right. So you got, it's called, um, lapper.usd. Is this it right here? Yeah. So I just drag it into my, do I bring it in as an asset or as a layer? I would do it as a layer. You don't, okay. yeah. Non-destructive workflows, right? Do you have the starting line? Is this using the racing grid start USD? Or is this a no, whole other this is using because... racing grid. So let's we open up racing grid start. Yeah, and then throw your car in there because I have to have the starting line and the lap line already in that one. You just it's kind of weird using two laptops at once, I'm not gonna lie. The lapper is in there, but the car's not. Oh yeah. I was scared to put the car in and save it. I didn't want to mess up your scene. So. No, no, it's it's fine. Easy, really easy to add the car. We'll do we'll do it right here. 
And then we'll just tur turn this thing um, F1 tenth. And let's turn it 90 degrees. Oh, other way, other 90 degrees. And I'm guessing we should probably back it up a little bit. So it's, should we back it up a little bit? Or just start it right here? Just start it right it here. It doesn't matter. Huh? As long as it hits that starting line, it triggers it. Okay. Um, it's going to print to this top corner, right? Yeah. Will it oh, print wait. anything yeah, when it first hits that line? Or not until it finishes a lap? It won't until it finishes the lap. All it does is store the time. All right. Here we go. God, it's like the engine was revving. We need some music. Well, also, not to overcomplicate things, but I love to overcomplicate things. Look at this idea from Zia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would Next love that, too. PC. Well, once we have a reinforcement learning, you know, pipeline, then we can totally do that, right? We can just, we can just, we just add a penalty if one car hits another car and add that to our reinforcement learning pipeline. Okay, we're halfway. Oh. I think we might have a problem because it's printing. I think something else is, I think the Ross nodes are also printing to that spot. Oh, oh so we right, might right. want we might have to read just make a tweak real quick and change that node to um to it, print to the console. That would be fine. I, it should here. override it though once Wait. it hits that lap line. Here it goes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Oh there it is, 21 seconds. Cool. Okay, that's great. Yay, it worked. We yeah, started the music. music. Nice, good job. That's uh, exactly what we needed. <laughs> It's a We're good song for this, too. It is. <laughs> Ooh, I could watch this car drive around all day with this music. <laughs> yeah. It's like, a, what's that called? The relaxing videos on YouTube? ASMR? AS so, so, someone's going to, like, know. repurpose this live stream to be an ASMR video. Watch oh, the, watch yeah. the, it's a, the AMR ASMR. The, yeah, a AMR 24 hours. 24 7 <laughs> live stream with let's chill music and every 21 seconds you get to see it, that it took the car 21 seconds to go around it will be consistent this will be 21 seconds again i don't know let's find out car lo-fi oh kind of went off track there it might be a little slower let's see Oh, okay. it goes by too quick. Let's reset it and change it to yeah. a, a print to console. You can also oh. draw draw uh, draw text to screen space, so oh, it's separate from your print text. Um, if you go into the action graph uh, and then type in in your node search, it's draw draw screen draw yeah. screen space text. Right here. Yeah, and then just re just like unhook the print text and replace Down it here. with that one. Yeah, and it'll show up in like the middle of the screen. So drag that one in. Yeah. I was thinking about using that one because that one's cool. You can customize it where you want on the screen. So let's see here. It's so just like, from... yeah. So disconnect this one, right? Yep. And then plug it into... Oh, you have to be in. Are you in the lapper USD? It might not show. Sometimes it doesn't show that's been disconnected, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue, even if it still prints yeah. out. Okay. Uh, it it's like the noodle is bugging, but it's been disconnected. Um, and then just disconnect that two string, or I guess you could. You don't even have to disconnect it. You could just like. Yeah, I changed it. the edit layer. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So that it would hopefully work right. But I also won't save. So go to where? Text. Uh, text. And click on your draw screen space text. Um, your background color is gray. Your um, text color is white. So you should be able to see it. It's going to show up like, so it's at position 50-50. So you should see it like, it, sh it will be like in the middle of your viewport when it pops That works. Up. Boop. Okay, that's working. Let's make this bigger so we can 
Oh, what did I do? I messed it up. Yeah, this this laptop is it's working, but it's a little underpowered for this, so I get, I get a little bit of a low frame rate, unfortunately. But not to worry, the the laptops will have at GTC um, have um, 4080s, and it, it's been really working well. So. Edmar found the low Streamyard's lo-fi music. There we go. This one goes out to Angel. <laughs> <laughs> Edmar's a DJ now. It's like Casey Kasem. I had no idea. Oh wow! Go back. <laughs> my mom used to love Casey Kasem. Oh my gosh, always I playing that when I was little. constantly. <laughs> Classic. Let me know if the volume's too loud. I can adjust it. Mike asked a good question. What makes it low-powered, RAM or GPU? Uh, this has got like a A3000, which is equivalent to a 3060 GPU. So last generation and lower VRAM. Uh, if you're going to get into Omniverse, I would prioritize VRAM over, that's kind of, it's going to let you open up those bigger scenes. But, but I got to say, um, from 3080 to 4080, I'm noticing a really nice frame rate. So... Oh, it printed something here, negative zero. Because it hit it twice. So it printed a number and then oh, it's going so slow way. that it, so it's having that issue that I was talking about where the front right. wheel hit it, triggered the time, and then the back wheel hit it and it was like point or like negative zero, which doesn't make any sense. So. Well, it was probably zero and then it made it negative. A negative zero is hilarious. So well, yeah, we definitely need and... to Let's just go to a console print and then we can just see everything it prints, you know? So if we just, um, let's see here. Just reconnect. I'm going to delete this one. Did it delete? Uh, you put it when you were in the other layer. So it's uh -oh. it's gone, but because it's in your root layer, it's it's still rendering in the action graph UI that it's there. It's not It's not there. Yeah, see, you'll try to delete it, and it's like, oh, not there. It's a weird UI bug. Okay. Well, let's make sure that's connected. Ah. And then connect that. And then in this one, we'll just not go to screen. Right. Oh, the default, yeah, it's funny. It's negative zero. It says what it says. But let's now restart it here. You got to go to your and console. If we go to the console. I wonder if I should log it as a warning level. I'm gonna otherwise I'm getting so much info logging that I don't think we're gonna it. see it. So I'll go to print text, make it a warning, and go. So now through our console and make it warning level. Sophisticated nonsense says haven't worked enough with Omniverse yet to know, but could parent a separate front wheel and real wheel wheel entity to do the evaluation. So the problem with it is that um, the trigger is coming from the lap line and the starting line, and those are that that trigger is just reading collisions on everything. I tried to do a thing where I was like, maybe if I turn the collisions off on the other wheels and only have collision on the wheel I want, but then the wheels fell through the floor. So obviously that doesn't, that doesn't work the way I want it to. I need the trigger of the lap line to only, yeah, it can read all the collisions, but only happen when the collision from the front wheel is, is coming. So I might have to do like a, a script node. I don't know. I'm going to talk to Devin and see if Devin knows. All right, here we go. Please work. Here it Jen's comes. Taking the music. She likes to dance pop. Look at that. 21.9 seconds. It's pretty It's pretty consistent. Yeah. Let's do a oh, second. You, do you know why we're getting that negative zero? It's because trigger fires when a prim enters the trigger prim and when it exits. And so when that wheel rolls across, it's really, because that's so low, it's only in there for just a tiny fraction of, not even a full uh, frame update, not even a full update, so. 
Oh yeah, that's weird. Negative zero. Negative Great zero. So like 21.9 seconds for the lap and then a, like a frame for well, that's, so that's like one sixtieth of a second or something the triggers <laughs> on the starting line are still happening so oh, even right. though the, tri the starting line is gone it's still it's getting still triggered so it's still firing that new sim time which is fine so what's happening is that the front wheel is hitting the starting line as the back wheel is hitting the lap line so it doesn't oh. even have a, a moment to calculate the sim time to time B variable. 21.7. Very consistent. Yeah, just a little bit faster. And there we go. We now have a completely fair timing system. And I think some of the comments before were absolutely right. I think that um, for a really good reinforcement learning system, we're gonna wanna put lines kind of throughout and I, I think there's a few other things like we'll probably want to filter so that only say the front right wheel triggers the events. And we'll also want to only listen to the enter event and not the exit trigger so that we can, um, uh, so that I think that'll give us a little bit better reward system. But this is the foundation, right? And it's really with Omniverse, with Action Graph, with USD, this is pretty easy. And we can use the same kind of triggers to detect if the car hits a cone, right? Um, so yeah, there we go. I think we've got about 15 minutes left. I'm gonna stop this. And we've got two things we can look at. We can look at, I've got a bug with, um, let me... Data Juggler says, is the car driving itself or is it being operated oh, yeah. by a user? What do you think? The car is Data driving juggler. itself. Yeah, the, no hands. Yeah, None of us are... See, we still, we still have non-believers, even though we did the hands and, up. And it's data juggler. Jen is like, yeah. oh dear, come on, come on, help me out here. Believe, believe. <laughs> they'll, believe they'll believe when they do it at GTC, they will. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, because you'll do it yourself, right? You'll have a you'll have a whole room full of people walking out, going, "As written, as written." <laughs> Unless we and have a whole room you, full of idiots, like hidden in the background with Xbox controllers driving the cars. That'd but that's the thing. If he's already said that I'm an AI, that means that people are going to expect me when I'm there to be sitting in the back with some Xbox controller that can just do everybody's. <laughs> So if you hear us in the lab, in the uh, lab, like okay, only one person can try it at a time, I suppose you could be a little suspicious, right? No, no. Uh, no, no. Seriously though, it's driving itself, and it's yeah. Let's see. So, should we fix this bug, or should we try to get this real environment rigged up in Omniverse so that we can train in a? What do you Let's think? do the bug because environment cash floating might be an issue yeah that's a good point so sometimes if you've used omniverse it takes a minute to load assets the first time but after that they're cached and they load quickly um so you have cash on if you have cash on that's right mm -hmm. so let me share but just just to give you a for for all of you who just really want to do this real environment this really cool looking car in this really cool, cool looking scene. You notice the car looks like it's on the ground. It's even got shadows. Uh, I just, what I did is I captured an HDRI of the gym rather than doing a LiDAR scan. And it looks, it looks really nice. It looks a lot better. And so I want to try to set up this environment the, the same way that this environment set up as an HDRI. So but let's let's fix this bug first. If I go to window, let's see. Let me pop out these windows so you can so y'all can see what's going on. So here's the trainer that we'll be using in the lab. And I get two windows launching whenever I launch it. And let me show you. Let's let's do that. If I go to Windows Extensions and go to my third party. Uh oh, what happened? There we go. If I turn it off. Oh, oh, it doesn't shut down correctly either. So my window is now, they're still there. 
So we got some bugs with my my turning it on and then launch. And then when I launch it, it launches two windows. So let's dig into the Python code. To do that, I'll click on the extension and just select this VS Code, open the VS Code button right here. And, oh, don't peek, that's the tutorial. Don't peek. Whew. Just kidding, you can, you can peek. I mean, some people are gonna like be scrolling back and seeing if they can get a little bit of a head start on the tutorial it's there. It's literally probably just the description of the, the, the whole thing. <laughs> that's your right. sneak peek. That's your sneak peek. All right. Let's see here. Here's the extension. Let's open up extensions.py. And here we go. My windows are kind of wonky. There we go. All right. Here's where I build the window. And I've got this Ackerman AM trainer window. And I'm wondering if I've got some code in there that's. Um, causing us trouble. Oh, I call this, I call this, um, I call this super constructor in, in Linux. It was saying I had to do that. So we added that call to this I wonder if that could be the problem. There's the self dot build UI. Let's go to that. Does that also create a window? Replace image train toggle update. Here we go. Okay, here I create a window with this title Ackerman AMR trainer. And I wonder if this is also is doing the same thing. Let's just comment that out and see what happens. No, that's not it. Okay. Go, go back. You're going to need your super regardless. Um, but you must be creating that window more than once. Yeah, let's just see if build UI gets called twice. I put a, I put a stop in here. Let's attach the debugger. And so now if I save this. Why didn't it? It continued. It only built once. Yeah, but it's um. Oh well, okay, that's your problem. You need to comment out the line one eighty six. Oh, this one. Yeah, that that's your issue. Oh, I'm not even. I'm just okay. What's the name of my window going to be? Self dot underscore window dot frame. No, this is just building out the UI, the name. So if you scroll all the way back up to the top where the initialization is, that's yeah. where the name of the title gets inputted in. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go to, uh, can you go where's, back to your where's files? Where's the window created though? Uh, so if you go back to files, and then if you go to extension.py, that's oh. where the window gets created. Oh yeah, so you are building it twice. So just leave it an extension up high. Oh, okay. Oh dear. Let's, uh. So you probably got to since we're not really necessarily removing windows, there's probably a bunch of them right now. Now, if you turn it off and turn it back on again, it shouldn't, it shouldn't do it. Uh, no. Okay. But it's still creating it. So I definitely don't need that lot. Well, you know what? Did it's you still, save it? I saved it, but sometimes I have problems with the code getting cached. Do you ever have that problem? Yeah. yeah. And, and even though, Cause like if I put a stop in a way, the way I tell is, um, 
well is it will still stop on this line of code and i noticed it was doing that so let me relaunch omniverse mm -hmm. and um see if that solves that problem unless there's another line where it's doing that self window and it, it's doing the ui dot window that should only be happening once but if there's another area where that's occurring that could be why it's doing it again great question from uh the audience is this code available in open source it's not yet but it will be after gtc And let's see if it's launching. Sure you relaunch. register for GTC, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Or you get also uh, if you're going virtually, you get earlier access to the recorded sessions after GTC is done if you're registered already. Oh, that's your cool. general oh, way a little longer. And there are a few discounts, aren't there? There's like 25% off if you use my link. Yep. And then if you've ever been to GTC off, before, yeah, yeah, just use the same email address. It's 40%. And yeah. Oh. And if you get in a group of three or more, if you register as a group, I think you get 30% off. Okay, now we're getting an error. Let's find out what's going on there. Oh. Okay, so this is what's going on now, I think. I think I know what's going on there is if so for that before you yeah i'm using self.window from within for within here yeah but really it should be the self.window is out here so how do i yes. get a handle on this guy so you actually don't want that um because this um no 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 go back go back to the ackerman training window so the way that this is set up right now is that this class is inheriting from ui.window. So you don't want to say with self.window, you want to say with self.frame. That makes sense. There you go. Right. And let's, I, I just really don't think we need this. Excuse me. And, um, Oh, there it is. Only one of them. Cool. Now, I know it's another bug. Just while we're at it, while we're fixing bugs. Well, I've got Jen helping me fix my fix my issues. Let's uh Let's fix that one too. It doesn't uh it doesn't if I if I, if I turn this off, that window should disappear. Yeah, right. you don't have your destroy function set up. You don't have a destroy. I do have a destroy function. I think it's just not um, correct. Let me turn that back on. Okay. Let's go back to the code. Let's look at the error probably first, huh? Well, there wouldn't really be an error with it. Well, it says the shutdown extension has no attribute OV update. Okay. Yeah, and this is a common thing that I run into. I, I need a good pa I need to remember the pattern for this. If I go to the shutdown function, this OV update is an event handler that's that can be registered to every Omniverse update, and I want to destroy it if it's there, but it doesn't always exist. Like yeah, so you you for that you would want to make sure that it's um, defined in on startup. I did. Well, the thing is, I did. Well, I thought I did. Extension. Because the variable doesn't exist. You're trying oh. to non-existent variable, oh, which is you know what? I actually moved this to the window class. So if we go over to window here, uh huh, we've got self dot ob up to equals none. Okay. Is there like a a shutdown extension for this class that I, where I should? You would have to define a destroy function. And then I can just call that from the destroy function outside? Uh, yes. Yes. And we'll say, um, we'll keep, take this stuff here. Yep. And move it here. 
that comes that's just a leftover from refactoring this code yeah and then you would probably want to do like um like a super destroy uh so it'd probably be super and then like two parentheses and then uh no 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 not quite back 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 It'd be super parentheses. And then after the parentheses, it'd be a period. And then destroy. And parentheses. Okay. Um, so now in the extension.py file, you want to do uh, if self dot window. And then you want to do uh, self dot window. Yep. Uh, dot destroy. And then you want to say self dot window is equal to none. Yeah. I do that um, in here. I got unsubscribe. I should probably say self dot over update is equal to none. Yes. This will fail if it's not subscribed. If it's if it's none, this will fail. So shouldn't I also say like uh if it's none, then it won't go inside the if condition. Oh, right, right. Right, right. Okay. So let's see if that works properly now. Might have some leftovers. I certainly do. Oh, come on. Well, yet another cliffhanger, it looks like. We're Because we are out of time. Let me see. Let me try to launch. What does it say here? It says, well, I think it, we have that cat. I think we're having some caching trouble. I'm pretty sure this is, I think the code's right. I think it's going to work. Yep. I it think should. it's not running the latest and greatest here first i'm kind of sometimes this happens to me so there you go um got a timer it'll work for the race it'll work for reinforcement learning and we also have a few less bugs in the extension we'll be using so thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next week which will be our last live stream before gtc can't wait well not me already in california you are to be in California? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go a couple of days early. Oh, cool. oh man. I'm already here. Oh, well, <laughs> I'll be a couple hours south of you. Good one, Jen. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye.